Hello, we're here at Cannon Quarter Horses, and today we're guest lecturing for equine safety and handling. We're going to do a lesson on round penning and lunging. This is Bob Mallory. He's our in-house trainer here at Cannon, and this is, she's an Indian outlaw, one of our shiny outlaw babies. Um, she is currently a two-year-old, so she's already been through her, her round penning program and has been started under saddle but she's gonna be our demonstrator for today. So we'll go ahead and get started. When, I, when I'm using the round pen, I'm just kind of, I'm not really looking for any certain, certain results. I'm kind of just checking out the horse and seeing where they are mentally and physically. And the big thing that I want is for them mentally to kind of be at, at a minimum, have their mind inside this round pen and not on their buddies outside. And uh, ultimately, I'd like them to kind of be with me mentally. And so, of course, we got to get to their mind through their feet, especially if they're pretty hot and, and really wanting to run around and kick and buck around there. Um, and so we can use some transitions and some direction changes to kind of get to their mind. And I'll kind of show you what, what I personally look for when I'm doing this. Okay. All right, so when I ask her to go, um, I might just step towards her with my flag and I'm gonna do as much or as little, as much as I have to with my flag and as little as I can. And so that's with my flag, with my legs, once I'm on them, whatever it is, pressure in general is just, I'm gonna give them a little bit because I, I can always build up. If you go in there too hard, it's hard to bring it back down, especially if the horse is pretty reactive. So I'm gonna, Give her a little feel here. I might get a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. And then as soon as she starts giving me an idea of what I'm looking for, I just back off and then I can always go back to it. Um, in terms of body position, I'm gonna try to kind of stay as far in the middle as I can, but I might kind of walk with her here a little bit. I'm, I'm driving behind that shoulder. So if horses and cattle are the same way, um, that you drive them behind that shoulder. And if you get too far back, your position of your body towards their hip, you know, they're gonna wanna kinda circle around you. And if I wanna stop them, I'm gonna get up in front of that shoulder. And I see that a lot of times with people, whether they're doing groundwork or round pen, they end up getting too far in front of the horse, um, in front of that balance point of their shoulder and they have a hard time getting the horse to go. So right here, I'm kind of driving behind that shoulder. And when I want to step up there and have her stop or change directions, I go in front of that shoulder and now I'm set up to ask her to go the other way. And so a little release there with the flag and the pressure when she starts going, a little pressure there when she stops. And so even if I wanna get her up to a low, when she gives me the trot, I'm gonna back the pressure off and then I can go back to it. So right here, back the pressure off, now I can go back to it and ask her to, to drive off. And then same thing here, if I wanna have her stop and either just stop or stop and change directions, I step up in front of that shoulder and where this will be really important is when you first sometimes if you go up there in front of that shoulder to ask them to stop or change directions they'll just take off and what you'll see a lot of times is people get to chasing them around the round pen and this round pen i want to use my angle so if that horse is just really scooting and i get up here to come chase it I'm, all I'm gonna do is get further and further behind, so I need to actually step back here and give a little bit of ground. And if that horse is clear over there at that end, he's gonna see that he's got nowhere to go over here. And so really using the angles, learning how to use the angles of the round pen, um, it makes it a lot easier not having to run around so much and work up a good sweat, so. Whenever you're ready. So I'll just turn them loose here and ask them to kind of go around and of course, some of them you have to put a little more pressure on to get them to move out. Uh, so I like to use this flag instead of uh, 
instead of like my halter lead rope or a whip or something just because I can kind of move it around easier and I don't have to work as hard like if I was swinging the rope at them and so if they'll just kind of trot around like this this is perfect um, but I will check and do some transitions with them just to make sure that they're uh, not getting tight in that transition and especially once you get them saddled um, I kind of even if I've already ridden the horse, I still want to ask myself, would I want to ride them how they're going around right here? So she's going around pretty good, uh, kind of figuring her hind feet out there. That's what all that is. She'll swap leads there and get a little uncomfortable and kick out and switch leads again. And so she's not going to kind of figure it out herself. I might just come over here to the side and just ask her to change directions when she comes up to me like that and is giving me a lot of attention um, I'm gonna give her some time instead of just ambushing her to, to turn directions to let her know that I do want her engaged with me but I'm asking her to do something else and so same thing I'll forget about that other side for right now check this side out not a very good transition, so we'll see if she can go back down to the trot and we can try it again. And ask her to kind of commit to that a little bit. There we go. Then I'll just kind of get quiet over here. And now she's starting to think about coming over here a little bit. Good. And I'm not too particular on if uh, I'd like them to kind of walk here into the middle and hook onto me. But if, they, if I don't get that right away, it's no big deal. Um, as long as the horse kind of still has their attention on me. And so if they leave like this, I might kind of try to help them. Or if they just leave, they're, she's totally gone now. I'll say that's fine. You don't have to be here with me, but you got to move. Good, and now she kind of wants to be with me again. And so if they don't want to come into the middle and kind of hook on, oh, there she goes. Good. And so then what I like to do here when they're with me mentally is see if I can kind of keep this all walk to their hip and I'd like them to kind of roll their hind quarter around like that. And she brings her front through just like I'd ask her to do when we're doing groundwork. And if I lose her, that's okay. She's got two people in here today. Good. And step away. I might step back towards her. Step away, see what she does. Make a little bit of life here. And she leaves, that's okay. We'll just do the same thing over again. and getting the saddle on them the first time I really want them paying attention to me uh, and it's not about me it's just so they know what's going on because a lot of times what will happen is that their minds kind of somewhere else and you can kind of sneak by them um, you know they'll let you get a, a pad on them sometimes they might let you get the whole saddle on them and they're not even paying attention they're tuning you out and they feel that cinch go tight and off they go so just kind of getting them here to where they're uh, they're focusing in on me um, and they're aware of what I'm doing. That's really the goal in here. And uh, you'll see how that's gonna translate over to when we start lunging them. Okay, uh, I'm Bob Mallory at Can Quarter Horses. This is a, uh, she's Mo Shiny. She's a Shiner's Nickel out of Mofe Ray and she's a three year old. Um, so we're gonna kind of go over lunging them a little bit. Uh, the first things that I want to make sure is that the horse is going to kind of honor my space and uh, that they'll kind of yield to me. And so 
I'll just kind of step into them. I like to put my hands out in front of me a little bit just to give them something to look at, you know, put it right in front of their eye where they can see it so I'm not startling them or surprising them. But I like to do that here with their hind quarters that they'll kind of roll that hind quarter over when I walk in. And you think about having a bubble between you and the horse, like a beach ball or something, that when I walk in here, I don't want that bubble to collapse. So I need the horse to, to yield to that. And if they won't, um, you know, we can drive them with the lead rope. So I just kind of put a little life here. I don't need to really whack them too hard with it unless they're really just kind of stuck. Um, just give them a little bit of life there. Let them roll that over. Bring that front through again. And then as they come off, that hind quarter should kind of go the other direction before they get straight. And so my philosophy with everything is that I kind of, uh, I try to teach them everything at the walk, train everything at the, at the trot and then test them at the lope. And so I'm not gonna try and teach them anything at the lope, that's just kind of where I'm gonna check in on stuff. And if it's not there, I need to go back to the trot or even the walk. So I'm gonna do, make sure I can walk, see how they're walking here. Um, if she was saddled, I would be looking at that saddle horn and that can tell me a lot of things if, if it's kind of cocked off one way or another, where the horse might be a little out of adjustment. And then I'm gonna, once I'm kind of happy with this, uh, I'm gonna ask them to trot here. So I'm just gonna kind of liven up my body a little bit. And same thing as in the round pen, I'm driving behind that shoulder. And this should all really be the same as what I'm doing in the round pen. I'm just, since we've got her on the, on the lead line here, it's a little more confined and a little more controlled. And so we're just asking the horse to kind of have a little bit more responsibility in it. Okay. So what I'm looking for here, just like in the round pen, that they're kind of focused on what's going on. You can see she's kind of talking to the other horses outside. And so I don't want them pulling on my hand. So when they hit the end of that lead rope, it's okay, but I'm just gonna kind of let them run in and I want I'd, I'd kind of expect them to come off of it. And she's doing a good job of that, except for she loses. <laughs> I was gonna say she loses the life. And if they do that, it's no big deal. That's, this is kind of our time, the round pen and lunging them like this. I like to do this every time before I get on. Um, this is our time to see if that stuff is there. And if it is, let them get it out of their system. When they got that stuff kind of pent up like that, you're gonna have a hard time getting in their mind and teaching them anything when you get on their back. So now she's going around here pretty good at the trot. Um, she's still wanting to look outside, I'm not, I'm not ignoring that, but I'm not making a big deal out of it. I just kind of draw her off. So I'll ask her, ask her up to the lope here. And same thing, I'm driving behind the shoulder and I'm just gonna kind of liven up my body here. I can cluck or kiss, you know, whatever your preferred cue is. I like to cluck them up into the trot and kiss them up into the lope. Same thing here when they're at the low, they're going to be a little more likely if they want to come out to the side and pull on your hand, they're, they're going to be more likely to do it at the low. And so I just keep drawing them off here. And one thing you really have to think about when you're, if you're going to lunge them and lope them here, is that you're giving them kind of as much space as you can. Because the smaller the circle, the harder it is for them to be balanced at the low. So I want to kind of make this circle as big as I can for her. And now I'm kind of looking here for her to find a place to stop where she wants to kind of uh, look at me like that. And uh, there she lost it. And roll her hip over just like that. And so when I'm ready for them to kind of stop, I have to make sure that they're not, you know, pulling on my hand, looking outside. And I just kind of uh, bring the life down in my body a little bit and wait on them. And they might not always find it at first. That's okay. 
we'll just kind of let her trot around here. I have my position driving behind her shoulder. She's a little softer going to this side. I like how she's trotting around there. I don't so much mind that she's look, she, she looks out as long as she's not just kind of uh, leaving what we're doing. So if she wants to look out because there's stuff going on, that's fine if she's checking back in with me. So if that's pretty good, we'll ask her to lope now. And this is what we're trying to check and make sure she's got out of her system before we get on her. And it's okay, we won't make a big deal out of it. Just kind of let her... If she pulls on me and I pull back on her, I'm likely to start a fight. And so I'll just kind of let her pull on herself there until she starts thinking about what she'd like to do. Good. She kind of softened there a little bit. There's a draw out here of the other horses, so when she comes right here, she's a little more likely to pull on me a little bit because she's got that draw outside, no big deal. And that was, that was her decision to kind of stop and move in there. So that's good. That's what I'm looking for anyway. We'll kind of come in and reward this and let her just sit there and think about it. And so I like to, once I've got kind of what I'm looking for, I like to let them just kind of sit here, come down, and then ask them to go out again. And I'll check both sides again to see if that initial kind of burst that she has when she's first loping, if we've, you know, if she's got that out now, it's just because she was fresh or if there's something else going on. And in most cases, you let them come down here and uh, kind of take a little breather. They'll be a little bit better when you ask them to go off again. So I'll kind of walk towards her here. Ask those shoulders to go. So she's positioning herself on that circle and then we'll go forward. Directions. Good. And so that that's the same thing like we were doing in the round ten. I can step in front, try to change the direction. Of course, I got my lead rope here to help. I can take this towards her hip. And if I had one that was just really kind of being a runaway train with me, I might just stop my feet and hold on to that lead rope and let her kind of break her hip over herself. She's not being like that, but. That was just her slipping and losing her balance. So I'm going to ask her here to uh, kind of hunt a release where she'll make, she'll make arrangements on her own with her feet to make a good transition and that'll be her release. And once she figures that out, that that's all I'm asking her for, she'll start making those arrangements on her own earlier and earlier. trying to figure out her hind feet. You see she's kind of in and out of the correct lead and hind. So if I need to help her slow down, kind of, there we go, pull her down a little bit to the trot. There we go. That was a good transition. She made arrangements with her feet there. So now I'm going to kind of help her find a place to quit. So I just kind of walk towards her hip here and push this lead rope towards her hip and let her find a place to come down.
Sometimes you have to kind of help them come down to get the release, to show them what the release actually is before they can start hunting it on their own. So that was good on that side. We'll ask her to kind of move her shoulders over here. Put herself on that circle. I'm gonna try it here. Yeah, that coming around a lot quicker than the last time we tried it. So we'll try it again. That's okay. What I'm concerned about is that she's looking to make arrangements. She made the arrangements. It kind of fell apart after a stride or two, but that's okay. We still want to give her the release so she knows that she did the right thing there by making those arrangements with her feet. And then we can always try again. <laughs> 